Hi, the name's Dash, and I'm working on a rhythm game RPG called Serenity. For those of you who haven't seen it, or who may not remember, one thing I mentioned in my initial reveal of Serenity was its custom physics system, which was effectively a copy of Game Maker's default physics engine with some bells and whistles like wind attached. It allowed me to push objects around, and I could apply gravity to the player and objects around the world. It didn't take long for me to realize I wasn't happy with it, so I rewrote it from scratch while hopped up on crap while heavily caffeinated one night. Some of you may wonder why I'm not using Game Maker's built-in physics, which is a fair thing to question. That's because my game's world effectively exists in three dimensions, whereas Game Maker's physics are primarily built to only work on two axes, X and Y. I need something that takes Z into account as well. You may question why I'm bothering adding physics at all when I'm making, you know, a rhythm game RPG, but I have my reasons. Let's take a quick look at why I'm doing this in the first place. So let's answer the following questions. What exactly are physics, and how do they apply to game design? In the most basic of terms, physics in this context are just a series of forces that are applied to objects to move them in different ways. Thing hit thing, thing go whoosh. Giving objects physics helps make the world feel more alive, and gives the player more things to interact with. Game physics are usually fun to play with, even when they aren't necessary. I'll show some examples in a bit, but I'm sure plenty of us have spent a little too long playing with a physics system in a game we like at some point or another. Game physics don't need to be realistic to be believable. Having fun physics with character is often more fun than trying to copy real life, much like how having a creative art style is often more interesting than simply going for realism. And while I wouldn't say it's one of the main benefits of having a solid physics system, having barriers take up real space in the game world is much more fun than putting up an impassable invisible wall for the player. As for a few examples of games whose physics are known for being fun, Valve's games like Half-Life 2 and Portal have robust physics systems that are a ton of fun to mess around with. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and its sequel, Tears of the Kingdom, give you the ability to do tons of fun things with their physics. I remember E3 2016, where people got to play Breath of the Wild for the first time, and tons of people immediately tried to mess with the game's physics by creating a pseudo-catapult that would launch Link into the air. Super Mario Galaxy specifically its unique gravity system, is probably the single most important component of that game's gameplay. Noita is noteworthy for its extremely impressive physics system, making use of what's known as pixel simulation. But I'm not going for anything near that fancy for my project. I'm aiming for Serenity's physics to be similar to something like Breath of the Wild, but applied in a setting more similar to like the Mario and Luigi games. This might sound strange, seeing as the Mario & Luigi games barely have any physics to speak of, but the comparison will make sense as you keep watching the video. Speaking of Breath of the Wild, my game also has a system for simulating the elements, like fire, water, and wind, but that's such a complex system that I feel like it deserves its own video somewhere down the line. So for now, I'll just focus on the basic things we think of when we say physics, like gravity and friction. So, getting into how I remade my physics system, I started off by reworking the game's gravity so that the player can fall off ledges and such. Like in real life, gravity in Serenity is a constant force being applied to its characters and objects. Jumping applies force in the opposite direction, but gravity eventually catches up and forces you back to the ground. I had to mess with the depth sorting for these blocks for a while, and it's still not perfect, but it's not significant enough to get hung up on this early in development. What I eventually realized is that it's the player's shadow that's causing the issues here, not the player. The shadow is trying to draw itself at the same depth as the player, which doesn't always make sense. The number on the blocks indicates their height in the z-axis. The graphics will be replaced by something much more natural looking later. Thinking back to the Mario & Luigi comparison earlier, those games also make use of large blocks and stuff that look like they're part of the environment. These blocks look like a mess in the editor, but the depth sorting system makes them look fine once the game is compiled. For the way things are currently set up, the block's height on the z-axis is actually in the negatives. We can actually turn them into sort of makeshift pits by putting them in the positives, which looks... Yeah. I'd like to add slopes to the game at some point as well, but I think I'll wait until I've actually designed an area that calls for that, as I'd like to avoid doing unnecessary work whenever possible. Once the gravity functioned well enough, I moved on to recreating the system for pushable objects. You can push objects around, and they take more effort to move based on how heavy they are, which is dictated by a weight variable. Though I'm not sure I'm keeping this in its current form, as regardless of how I do it, it always looks quite choppy. While block pushing in many games tends to rely on a grid system instead of actual physics, I'd rather make one type of pushability, if you will, and apply to all physics objects. So basically, there's no real distinction between pushing a block used for a puzzle and pushing a random fruit on the ground. So far, the only real issue I've had with the system is getting these two things, gravity and pushable objects, to fit together. Not only should the pushable objects have forces applied in the X and Y axes, they should also be affected by gravity. This didn't become an issue until I wanted the player to have the ability to push them off ledges. My original collision system only allowed for the player to interact with one solid object at a time, so I had to rework the system a bit to allow for the ability to push an object while, say, standing on top of a block. And hey, it works flawlessly now. Let's try to push one block off a ledge onto another one. Oh. 
That doesn't look right. Okay, looking past some of the issues that remain to be fixed, the physics is starting to shape up pretty well, but they're still pretty stiff. Let's add some flair to them. I want the game to be cartoony and fun after all. When the blocks fall off ledge, they'll immediately settle once they hit the ground. Let's change that, shall we? Let's apply some force back upwards relative to the speed they were moving at, and bingo! Now they bounce. We can change how bouncy an object is based on a single variable as well. I was really happy with how that bounce thing turned out, so I thought I'd give friction a go. So instead of merely changing the position of a block when the player walks up to it, let's apply a force to it and constantly make the friction subtract the force as long as it's colliding with the ground. This should be pretty easy to- This should be pretty easy to add. The amount of friction can obviously be adjusted as well. If I want to add ice physics or something in the future, it's as easy as changing a variable. While it may not look like much yet, but with all the placeholder graphics and what have you, what we have here are the basics of a fairly robust physics system. And as I mentioned, the game also has sort of an elemental system as well that is technically part of the physics, but like I said, I will be making a video on that further down the line. If you want to see that video when it comes out, I don't think I need to tell you what to do, you can figure it out. Serenity is a very ambitious project with lots of topics to cover, so you might want to come along for the ride. The last video I made was a deep dive into the game's graphics, how they're built from the ground up, both from an artistic standpoint and from a technical standpoint. So if you think the game seems interesting, you might want to go check that out. And I usually don't ask this of people in my videos, but if you like this video and you think you know someone who might like it, it'd be awesome if you'd share it. That'd be great. Regardless of whether you've been following me for years, or if this is the first time you're seeing my ugly mug, thanks a ton for watching. All the way to the end especially. It means a lot. I hope everyone's doing well, and as I always say at the end of these videos, have a good day.